So we are here from Iceland. I'm Vala. I'm Cecilia. Yeah, and we are, along with being filmmakers, I'm actually an engineer and Cecilia is an economist. Yes. And we have been working on a film called The Star of Kids for over the last year. One, yeah, one and a half year. One and a half year, oh my God. And we have been traveling around the US and Europe, meeting with young entrepreneurs, meeting with investors, meeting with people from universities, incubate programs, journalists, everything. And we are trying to find out what is it about being an entrepreneur that is so awesome. <laughs> so we have a trailer to show you that we released recently. The fi film is not finished, so we only have the trailer to show you. You don't start a rock band today. You start an, a company. I think an entrepreneur, it's a difficult one. How do you, how do you define an entrepreneur? Um, I think an entrepreneur is a person who dares to have a dream that not that many people have, and even more importantly, dares to chase it, put their money where their mouth is and their time and their career, and dares to take the risk of going out there to realize that vision. I mean, I, I can't even pinpoint where, where it all came from, but um, I just always had the impression that I was going to invent things. I guess what I'd say is just do it. Just try it and think, really think, what. What is the worst that can happen? When things get bad, the only, the only startups that succeed are the ones that really sort of are determined enough to see it through. A lot of time people are like, oh, we're killing it, you know, we're, we're gonna change the world. You talk to them like tomorrow, they're like, dude, I don't know why I'm doing this. I should have just been a banker. I'm not the kind of kid that had my own like newspaper route and was selling candy and stuff like that. I've never been very business minded. I think in the ways that I am an entrepreneur is in that I, I like working on my own thing. Probably the hardest thing to do is to find people like you who've got the same passion and belief as you. And, and if you're in an early stage business, uh, if you can find partners that you want to work with uh, who've got the same idea and the same passion as you, I think that's a great place to start. It doesn't matter where you're from, um, the internet is a platform on which to innovate. I would encourage everybody, start to work for um, a kind of a young startup learn, expand your network, learn other people, and then do your own company. That was kind of a wild experience going, <laughs> having a checking account that had maybe $60 in it, uh, and then, you know, you wake up the next morning and it's $1.2 million in there. Yeah, you're gonna be bootstrapping. Yeah, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. Yeah, you're gonna be earning less money for a while, but you are building something that you have made, and that is the satisfaction. Yes. So today... Thank you. Today we wanted to tell you a little bit about the background of the project, why we are doing this. And then as well we want to tell you about, we are building our own startup now, so we want to compare the... Making a documentary and doing a startup, and it's actually really, really similar. <laughs> yeah, so we are, as we told you before, we are from Iceland, and as you maybe have heard, everything collapsed in Iceland back in 2008. You maybe heard about it, it was in all the news. Like overnight, lots of people lost their jobs and their lives saving, and it was like a horrible time in Iceland. And I was one of those people, I was working in an engineering office and lost my job. Cecilia was studying overseas here in the US and just come, came home, back home to Iceland. And we are both on square one at that time, didn't have jobs, and there were like a lot of depression in Iceland at that time. So we decided to do something and wanted to build our own company. Uh, everybody in Iceland are crazy for board games. Yes. You know, board games, you know what that is? <laughs> uh, that's why we decided to make a board game. 
And it went awesome. It was like a major success in Iceland. The first shipment sold out in only five days. And we, yes. we actually didn't sleep at all in December. We actually produced it in China. And it came so late. It actually came five, five days before Christmas. And this is just like a product that's, that is actually uh, just sold uh, at Christmas. And we had all our little money and our student loans in it. So we didn't sleep at all. But then it came and yeah. successfully sold in five days. <laughs> it was sold out on Christmas Day. So we were high on life at that point. Like it was big time in our lives and we really want to let other people feel like we felt at that moment. So that's how the idea for the Startup Kids came about. We wanted to create a movie, go out and travel around the world, meet other entrepreneurs and let them tell, uh, tell, them, tell their story to us. So we got a little grant from the EU uh, rented like a video camera. We weren't professional filmmakers, but that was no problem in our minds. It was exactly as Tim was saying before, like you don't have to be a pro filmmaker today to make an awesome movie. Yeah, so we started out by that. Uh, we got like a little teaching from a fellow filmmaker. He was like, yeah, here's the rack button. This is some settings you need to know. And uh, we bought like a one-way ticket to the US. We didn't know anybody at this point. We started to cold emailing people. Uh, it helped a little having the line like, we are two Icelandic female entrepreneurs. <laughs> like it had a little impact on some of the people, I think. <laughs> so soon we were getting like interviews with these amazing people, like really high profile, successful people. And it was almost like a dream for us. Uh, and we have so many stories from this time. We were like traveling, the two of us together with our equipment, like always yeah. getting lost. Yeah, All we actually went to uh, New York, San Francisco, Berlin, London, Stockholm, Copenhagen. And a lot of people are actually uh, asking us, why did you actually choose uh, like those places to go to? Are they all the startup scenes so hot there? I was just like, mm, no, we had friends there that we could stay for free. So that's the reason for the places, kind of. But it was still San Francisco and like Silicon Valley, of course, for obvious reasons. Yeah, and uh, it, it, we, like really soon we got to know the camera and it went all right that we weren't pro, family, pro filmmakers, uh, except for one time. We only say I the don't story. Know. <laughs> yes. We only say the story, say the story to really special people, and you can't tell anyone about this because it's uh, kind of. A I think this is going online. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You people online, don't tell about this. <laughs> so there was in one interview. It was like really, really early on, maybe oh. third interview oh my gosh, or something. I can't think about this now. This and we were actually meeting our hero, and of course, our hero. We are like females. It's Katarina Fake. The oh, founded Flickr? Yeah, she's founded Flickr, she's founded Hun, she's like a, she's like a goddess in the entrepreneur world. And we were like meeting her and she was low on time, so like, okay, girls, girls, how, how quick will it be? We were like, yeah, 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 no problem, it will be quick. And then the camera actually got stuck in some setting. And we were like speaking in Icelandic, like, uh. fuck, why am I here, man? It's all hell. Yes, and, yes. and Catherine was like, is this all right? And we was like, yes, yes, it's all right. And it was like stuck in some mode and we just took the interview. And now we have on tape this really incredible interview with Catherine Fake, where we only have like two black eyes and one little nose and nothing <laughs> else. <laughs> so we have this in our private collection. You can ask for this if you yes, want to. I think this is, will actually be like really popular video like because I think you can like in the whole world not find that interview that it's so completely ruined uh, with Katrin or fake that this will be very very special I think but the best thing Katrin I thought we were like really pro filmmakers yeah that was good one yeah so okay we are we have been here for the last two weeks shooting the final material for the film and we're aiming to release it, hopefully, yeah. November. Yeah. 
Uh, we released the trailer you saw just saw here back in April, I think. And along with that, we released like a Kickstarter project. You know what Kickstarter are? Is yeah, and it blew us away. Like only yeah. two hours after we released the project, it was funded. It was amazing. We were getting email from all over the world, yes, like bro. Japan, Italy, all over. Like, uh, and people wanted to make subtitles for the film, and because this is like really a. <clears throat> especially in Europe now, just because of the crisis, and they want to motivate people, and they want to, uh, and they want people to see, like, how it's done. And I was just at, the, at this conference in Cologne two weeks ago, and there was this guy from Africa, and he just, hey, can I show you, can I, like, take, uh, can I show you, you uh, can I show the film in Africa? Because, like, all the people, they so want to do something, but they don't know how. And I was just like, just this moment, I was just, oh, my God, this is so incredible. Because, like, the world is so connected now that, like, we could just, like, from Iceland, 300,000, actually, 300,000 people live there. We just, like rent the camera and we just can go all over the place and meet all these people and release a trailer and have this kind of impact. I mean, just like people want to show it. And I think like that's probably the greatest reward because if you can motivate somebody out there to do this, I think that's just like a great thing. And also because a video is so powerful, like it's, so, it's such a powerful media like instead of just uh, having it in text you have like real people talking about it and and you actually feel like you know them or something so yeah sorry <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's your you? turn now yeah um, yeah so i think this is a story but it maybe sounds like we don't really know what we're doing uh, and i'm just saying we didn't really know it in the beginning but I mean, we are always, always learning because we have actually done everything by ourselves. Like we shot, we interviewed, we researched and everything. Uh, we produced it, we got funding, we did everything. So of course we know what we are doing, but sometimes it, it I mean, it doesn't like, <laughs> like with- It's Ka a better story if you tell it. Yeah, and, and with Katrina Fake, it actually didn't work out. <laughs> but I mean, we have all these amazing other videos and we actually, we have so much, Material. I think we have uh, eight, uh, yeah, 90 we have interviews. interviews. Yeah, we have 90 interviews. interviews. And this is just a lot of stuff. And not all of it will end up in the film, of course, uh, because we don't have that, that much time. But with all this uh, material, we want to, uh, we are launching our new website, thestarbikids.com. Uh, and we want to make like short episodes about, because we asked a lot, uh, we asked a lot of people about. How did you find your coworker? Like, how did you do your funding? How did you bootstrap? And and we want to make like um, short educational episodes just about that. Uh, and so, but I think it's uh, like with everything, we didn't know everything in the beginning. Uh, we just trusted that we could, that we were smart enough to find out the ways to get there. And I think it's, uh, yeah. So this is all coming together, and it's actually we have seen a lot of. This shot, and I and I'm really confident of the film will be really good, and and I mean this is just our first project, and then uh, like if we, I, I personally want to do another documentary later, and then we have all this experience and all of these amazing people with that met that we met, and I think that what uh, su surprised us the most was uh, the fact that people were so willing to help us everywhere like this is so amazing and i i think it's like especially in the tech community i think this is really really special there's just yes yes and I, we actually found that, that it wasn't that good to plan before <laughs> uh, so we just got there and i think it's really hard to plan for a documentary uh, because you kind of just have to go where the wind will take you so like we told you, we didn't know anybody. We just bought like a one-way ticket. And then when you get there and met the people that know everything about it, they will point you to another direction. You will go there and from there and there. And there you learn something. And also, I think it's when you're doing a documentary, you'll kind of have to, because you can't direct it directly. You can't, uh, you can't make people 
uh, you can't like plan questions or you can't uh, control what the people say. So you kind of have just to look at it all and go from there and like go with the material. And now like we have been doing this for one and a half year and we are now, uh, we are not asking the same questions as we do, uh, as we actually did at first because now we know so much and we know was like the most interesting part because in the beginning we were like we weren't just asking general uh, questions and I actually think our interviewing technique is also getting better <laughs> because and at first actually, it was not really good. We actually know too much I think now VCs and investors are actually approaching me like who should I invest in? Do you know about <laughs> someone new that I haven't heard about? So yeah. I think it's a new way for us to monetize. And we, our aim was actually to inspire people to start their own business and of course it inspired us the most. So we are building another startup now. Yes. And this was just an, uh, just an incredible journey because you have this because we actually did this at first because we wanted to motivate other young people to become entrepreneurs. Uh, and also because we wanted to learn and to be sure that we were entrepreneurs. It's maybe weird to travel the whole world just to know. Uh, but still, like we, like we were young, I think we were like still young. Uh, uh, and so we were uh, like, okay, I, know, I actually know this sounds really, really corny, but we were like on our journey to know who we were. I know this is really corny, but really it was this thing. Uh, so we, this was just like a huge l learning experience and we were of course interviewing for the, for the documentary but we were also asking questions that could, you know, help us uh, doing our startup and just to learn. Uh, yeah, that ex so our new startup uh, is called Kinwin and it's still in stealth mode, uh, launching in... <coughs> we are not really good with timelines. But, but we actually get things done, you know. Uh, but yeah, we are launching probably in two months. It's on schedule. Um, and um, yeah, and, and it's actually an a iPhone app. Uh, and yeah, this is actually our second game that we designed because we actually designed the board game we produced. And now we have designed the game of life. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's not smaller than that. So everything that you do, uh, it, like it turns your whole life into a game. So if you know the game Sims, so it's Sims for the real life. Uh, so like, uh, so it's similar of what we want to do with the documentary, motivate other young people to become entrepreneurs. Now we want to um, become. Now we want to motivate other people to become the best versions of themselves within the game. Um, and also, like with game and a movie, it's such a powerful media, and I think gaming it's even like more uh, powerful because like we're using gaming uh, techniques to motivate people and uh, get people to set goals and achieve them. Um, yes, so. I could probably talk forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, first, yeah. before yeah, I have before on the end, I really, really want to thank the Palo Alto Film Festival they, because they actually gave us a grant to be here. Yeah, I to come here, and we have three hundred thousand people back home that are really envious that we are here right now. We are always we are always doing like Facebook status about the weather here, and they hate us. They hate us because it's pretty cold in Iceland yep. now. <laughs> yes. So that's the end. Uh, we hope you will all check out the startup kits when it's out. Mm -hmm. It will be screened here somewhere. In we will let San you Francisco. know. So we, yeah, okay. So we have done like most of it, but we haven't decided on the distribution uh, strategy because we are thinking like we're doing startups, internet, and we are not sure like that the traditional way is the way to go. But we are still deciding, and we hope to find people that here that can help us with the strategy. <laughs> so any questions? Yeah, thank you. Yes. So the yeah, the question yeah. was where do we plan to start our company? Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So we actually were here uh, and fell in love with the place, you know, the weather, the food, yes. the beach, you know. No. <laughs> so we are moving here actually. <laughs> but we actually have a startup back home, you know. 
but it's like a social game uh, and we have developed like all the process and the talent is back home but uh, I think if you're doing a, something social and social game I think this is kind of the place to be right now because of the marketing and the promotion purposes and, and stuff but yeah and, and also we're always looking for new adventures you know and this is just a, one of them you know yes No, we actually got the grant, like a small grant to do the documentary. And that grant actually just covered our travelings and then we just stayed with friends. So it's not uh, like a grant. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, the yeah. question was, we got the EU grant, why are you moving to the US? So it's like a separate project. The startup is not yeah, the movie. We have like two companies each, yeah. Any okay. more questions? You, more? I know you want to know something. Uh, we showed you the, tra the trailer and we have some more trailers that we have been showing at some conferences. We don't have it with us. We just, uh, we just showed you the trailer. Um, so, not right now. Yeah, it was in the, yeah, it was actually in the beginning. So, but you can actually check it out at the startupkids.com and it's there. So please do. You were talking about that board game that you guys made. What did you guys do to market that so that you could just sell it out? Was it just people saw it on the shelf and uh, it up? Or? No. Okay, the question was how did you market yeah. the board game? We actually had an excellent strategy. We didn't have any, any money. <laughs> And there was like a big depression in Iceland at the time. Like people were like, oh, there's no future here. I just have to move out to Europe or something. And we actually played on that. We were like, we are two girls. We made this board game, we started the company. Like, do you want to feature us on TV where we can tell our story and like motivate yeah. other people in Iceland to do something? Yeah, I think people were actually looking for uh, up. Uh, like stories that would make people happy. Optimistic, you know, because there had been like been so much depression about the banks, about everything, and people were so tired of it. So then we just came and we had like a, and a lot of fun doing it. So it was actually easy for us to get press, and also we know a lot of people in the press. <laughs> so we got featured in like every newspaper, like people are getting tired of us, like, yeah, and oh, then the girls we, with the board game. Ugh. Yeah, and then we used Facebook a lot, because I think 80% uh, of Icelandic people are on Facebook, that's a lot. So we just had games and stuff, uh, because we had like a small social media consulting, see, so it was easy for us to do that too. Okay, good question. The no, question was, what have we learned from all the interviews and are using now building our company? This is actually a really good question. We have like been questioning this, like yeah. thinking about this a lot. Yeah, this is really, uh, I think it's more about uh, how they think than uh, actually just like uh, some specific thing that you can do. It's more about uh, just inspiration, about going in there and thinking uh, what's the, the worst thing that could possibly happen, like it could possibly happen uh, and just throw yourself out there and I think just do it and like don't make up excuses for not doing it and you will find out the rest of it. I think it's more about the thinking than just do this and talk to this, you know. And I think because it's really hard, especially when uh, like we are not brought up in Silicon Valley where everybody is uh, entrepreneurs. We are brought in just like we went to like she's an engineer, I'm an economist. Uh, I went through like the whole education system and nobody actually told me that I could be an entrepreneur. <laughs> and it's really weird. Uh, so it was because the education system is kind of always um, training you to be such a good employee. Uh, and I think it's really hard to unlearn that, kind of. And I think that has actually helped the most, if that answers your question in any way. Okay. I think it's a wrap. Thank you, guys. Okay.